Michael, hi, how are you? Hi, Sean, good, thank you, good. Good. Okay, well, just for the benefit of our viewers, um, would you like to tell a little bit about yourself? Where, where do you work and what's the role you currently perform within the university? Great, yes. Yeah. So I work at London South Bank University as a student recruitment and outreach officer for schools and college liaison. Uh, and I've been working for the university for just over four, well, for, in this particular role for just over four years now. So, uh, okay. yes, I'm almost sort of part of the London South Bank University furniture there. Okay. And, and, and how big is the team how, uh, that, that you work, work within yeah so the team itself is uh, is made up of six individuals uh so we've got three senior officers and three officers that work for the team and we cover uh the recruitment side of things uh outreach wide and participation uh and we do stuff like subject specific recruitment and uh schools college liaison ucas and stuff like that okay so obviously this has been very strange times. I promised myself I wouldn't use the word unprecedented anymore, but I've just used it, so there we go. Um, I think one of the big issues for quite a lot of uh, the teams that, that we work with here at Data Filter is, the, is this whole transition, which we've gone through as well, of sort of moving from that office space environment to suddenly working from home. And I say suddenly working from home, I think we're now in our sort of sixth week of, of having to work from home. So. How have you guys? How have you guys felt the transition has gone? You know, have, have there been positives, negatives? Can you tell a little bit about that that experience. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I think we're quite fortunate as a team that um, we work in quite a flexible office environment. Uh, to give you an idea, we have our own desks in our office, but they're made available for hot desking if if, if needs be. So that does mean that we have our own laptops. Uh, I've got my own work phone and the nature of my work, particularly that I spend a lot of time away from the university, uh, visiting schools, colleges uh, and various other trips. Uh, I'm quite used to working in, I guess, a, a not so typical uh, working environment uh, and sometimes not so typical working hours. So uh, for me, the transition has been quite uh, easy. Um, the team itself, we uh, started practicing about three weeks before lockdown, taking our laptops home with us each okay. day. Uh, it was probably a bit early to start that. Uh, I certainly did end up at the theatre a few times with a laptop under my seat, wondering why I brought it home with me. Um, but, but that was a good practice because when it came to the 16th of, of March, we actually made the decision that we weren't going to come into the office the next day and uh, we were very prepared you know we uh we we got home and the next morning we all had a meeting online and quite, and immediately we were working online um another helpful thing for us uh, as well as the support from the university is that we are part of what's known as the lsbu group uh, which is a group of academies uh, and the college which meant when it came to changing to uh from sort of delivering uh, a workshop as in person to a group of students, we could immediately test out how we can do this virtually. In actual fact, we did our first virtual uh, webinar session, student finance session, uh, within 10 days of our lockdown. So within 10 days of the 16th of March, I can't quite remember the date now, something like the, the, the sort of 24th or 25th of March, we were delivering a, a virtual workshop. So it's been, it's been quick um, and I think what's really helpful and it's, I think this is a good message is if, if your uh, university supports you with that. So for example, we've got a colleague in the team who didn't have a desk or chair uh, at home that was suitable to use for uh, this environment. So the, the university provided that uh, and, it, and it just means that people can work comfortably from home uh, and, and sort of keep up uh, with delivering delivering our work. Yeah. Okay. So, so this would normally be a pretty busy time of year for you. I mean, we'd be in the middle of the uh, the middle of the UCAS season, as well as lots of individual school events sort of going on. So, so how how have you how have you as a team managed to keep the communication going? Because you're in a tricky position, trying to you know close off recruitment for 2020 entry but also having to keep an eye on, on, on next year as well. So how has that, how has that transition uh, manifested itself? 
Yeah, so, um, well, um, within, within the university and team itself, it's been really important to kind of get those clear messages from our own institute about uh, what they're doing to respond to COVID-19. So uh, we have regular communications throughout the week, keeping us informed. Uh, and my team, we have a breakfast meeting every single morning. To oh, do you? Right, okay. And the other side of this, of course, is to keep up those strong uh, relationships with um, the careers advisors and teachers that we work with across the schools and colleges. Um, and we've tried a number of methods um, to do this. So uh, obviously everybody is, as you say, we don't necessarily want to use the word unprecedented, but it is unprecedented at times. And all the careers advisors and teachers are, are in a similar situation and they're busy creating learning materials for their learners. Um, so what we've tried to do is we've, we've, we've created a newsletter, which is quite uh, snappy and compact. It's not too long. Just pointing out how the university is managing its continuous uh, admissions into the September 2020 entry, but also uh, giving clear information about how we are at, at, uh, working online and um, students. Uh, and I think you've, you've pointed out that we would have been going into the UCAS season right now, we would be in the middle of the UCAS season. And yeah. Absolutely, I had plans to catch up with people at UCAS Exeter, etc. Yeah. Um, uh, and we're not able to do that at the moment. So we've put a number of webinars together where there are Wednesday webinars to in encourage students a little bit or learners to come to us and uh, you know, find out more information about things like student finance, how to apply, choosing the right course. Um, and we're also you know, looking at other uh, avenues. So you may have seen that UK University Search have got a virtual event happening in June. So of course we immediately wanted to say, well, we'll be part of this. Um, th this has of course been a, a, a strange situation when it's trying to, to keep the sort of day-to-day uh, -day working of how we normally see April, May, June in, in this part of the cycle. Uh, and we're still learning, Sean, how to, how to really uh, meet the, the sort of engagement uh, targets and needs that, that our learners, that we, we think learners would benefit from. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to report that, that provision is, 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 is falling into place uh, so far, I think, quite nicely. Oh, well, that's fantastic news. OK, so, so uh, I've been quite impressed with, the, with the, the, the ways that universities have tried to tackle uh, these issues. And you, you mentioned the UK University Search uh, event. In fact, we've, we've done an interview with, with Martin as well. And um, the numbers he's attracted have, have been quite impressive. So there are ways and means of, of attracting or talking um, to students. I think that's the key thing, isn't it? To keep that conversation going between schools, students and universities, uh, which does appear to be moving forward. So looking, looking to the future and, and where today, the 4th of May, I think there'll be another announcement uh, this week regarding lockdown. Um, it's looking unlikely that, that the world at large will be sort of left out on the streets again and, and we're looking at a very different world moving forward. Have you, have you already put plans or are you thinking about putting plans in place? Should schools go back and, and what, what, how do you feel things might alter from September onwards? Assuming schools go back. Yeah, sure. And uh, what, what we're looking at, Sean, is, is actually a, a number of different scenarios. Uh, no one's quite sure what things are going to look like in September. I think at the moment, obviously, our priority is, is to work out the, uh, the last part of this cycle, so leading up into July. Um, and, and there's other stuff to consider as well, such as clearing, which, of course, um, we will provide these services at universities as, as, just as we would have done before. But we're looking at a number of different uh, outcomes at the moment, uh, depending on what the lockdown looks like. So this could be operating everything entirely online with, with members of staff working from home to having the campus potentially partially open, depending on the scenario that we're faced with. With regards to 
school and college engagement. Um, we're learning a lot at the moment, Sean, and uh, a number of that learning is being able to create the right sessions and then deliver those sessions to the right students uh, at, uh, rather than just sort of creating lots of sessions and saying, well, anybody come along. We want to make sure we're still reaching uh, our, our target demographics. Um, and we're learning how we're, we're doing that. And I think particularly when we get to the end of this cycle in July, uh, we'll be in a much better position to start planning for September, particularly if we're still in this lockdown situation uh, and how, we're, how that autumn term will be shaped out between September and December. I think, uh, you know, on the optimistic side of, it, of that, that um, in the last you know, there are seven or eight weeks that we've been in lockdown, I feel that we've managed to achieve quite a lot so therefore, I'm optimistic that even if we're still in lockdown, uh, for the most part, our, our normal engagement plan will have, will have resumed if it's be a virtual form or, or actually visiting schools and colleges. Um, if we do find ourselves in a situation where lockdown has been lifted in some way, but there's still, of course, concerns the, this, uh, with regards to that, that actual engagement, then we'll just need to take consideration on, on additional, um, I guess, safety, safety measures uh, and what's, what's actually appropriate. Um, yeah. Okay, and, and, and what do you think, so if we look at, at this year's recruitment, uh, and hopefully you, you'll achieve the numbers, what, what, what do you think life, university life will look like for students that are starting with you this, this year? Oh, well, sure. No, I mean, it's, it's a difficult one to say. It will still be, I mean, it will be a, a very exciting experience. Um, the, the university uh, is, is, of course, still there and, and its, its functions are still happening. Um, we all hope that, uh, you know, come September, lockdown will have been lifted and we'll be all be on campus. Uh, I can't say exactly what it's going to look like, but for the meetings that I've been part of, for what I've heard, uh, it's going to be an exciting experience for our, our students all the same. There's a lot of work to, to ensure that uh, the same standard of learning is, is delivered uh, and that, that students have a, have a really engaged experience. So I've got no, uh, from my point of view, I've got no concerns for our new learners coming through in September 2020. Yeah. I, I actually think it could be quite exciting because I think there'll be a, a balance uh, what what this may open uh, is it, it open the eyes to a lot of academics that actually they can deliver quite a lot of what they deliver potentially um, online as well in the same way that you and I are, are having a chat. It's quite easy, isn't it, to deliver your lecture to 30 people at home and then you can prioritise what's the important bits for people to come onto campus or or, or what what can they do what can they do from from their homes on their um, on their laptops. But yes, it should be quite 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 an interesting scenario but I, I, I would tend to agree with you that I think from what I've heard from the universities we talk to that it shouldn't hopefully uh, detract from the, from the from from that student experience which obviously a lot of people uh, that's part of the reason why people go go into higher education um, talking about events like the UK University search uh, virtual event how do you feel uh, that the the sector could collaborate more effectively and I know that the sector already collaborates but are there things that you've perhaps noticed where you feel universities could collaborate more effectively with each other in terms of the, the delivery of, of quality work across student recruitment? And, and how yeah um, I think I think I think there is um, more we can do collaboratively uh, it's, it's always an interesting balance when we're working collaboratively because we, we all come from departments uh, where there's an expectation around uh, how we deliver our key messaging about our university and making sure that that uh, reaches the right students. One thing uh, I noticed um, is as we're all reacting to the COVID-19 situation is a lot of the universities are producing the same sorts of materials for schools and colleges. Um, and this may be confusing for some learners. Um, I've looked at some newsletters from uh, schools and colleges where they've listed um, webinar sessions from various different universities. 
And I guess it's the confusion can be that there's such a long list of webinars from so many, many, many universities. I guess one thing we, we could do together is, is potentially think about um, different ways to signpost students to uh, towards information rather than always uh, creating the webinar. But you, you know, I think this is this is a, a hurdle that we will get over together. You've 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 been a part of uh, Haloa before and the sort of work that they do. And I think what's really nice about the sector is it's all about sharing best practice and learning together. And this is something we're all learning together right now. It's 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 not a it's not a race. You know, it's not a race to the finish line. Uh, that's not the way the sector works. Um, the key thing for us all is, is getting that right information out to learners, particularly at a time like this, which is also quite different because a lot of learners have a, a lot of big questions. Uh, it's a very anxious time. Will they get into university? How will they visit the universities that they've not yet visited, some of their choices? Um, and then, of course, you've, you've touched on it before, what will the university look like uh, come September? So there's a balance here, but it's not just necessarily talking to students, uh, you know, about getting their finance into place. It's also reassurance as well that um, although it doesn't necessarily feel like it, uh, it's business as usual and we're all moving forwards and uh, your education will, will be provided. Um, that's that's I guess that's a really key message. Uh, and, uh, it only just occurred to me: how, how are you communicating with parents who are just talking about some of the, the worries that, that actual applicants may have? How are you? How are you reaching parents? Is it, do, do they tend to join in on some of the delivery that you're doing online, or do you have talks for them in particular? You know, Sean, that's a very very good question, and I think it's a question that we haven't fully answered yet uh, within our team. Um, when I've delivered a lot of a lot online workshops, they've been organized with the, the colleges to, to come to bring a student, bunch of students together and have that conversation. The Wednesday webinars, we've only had the first one last Wednesday. Uh, oh, okay. and, but what I could tell, we didn't have any parents as part of that engagement. So um, there is aspects to what, what our normal business, I guess, that has have disappeared such as the parents evenings and, and the sheer number of he fairs which which was a lot of our face-to-face -face communication with um with young learners so as as we're moving forwards i guess we're trying to learn new ways yes to engage with the young learners but also with their parents and i, and I think for us it's it's still a question that we, we want to sort of get that right, um, how okay. to communicate with parents at this time. I, I will definitely add that to my list of questions with any future interviews we do, just to see. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it's an important aspect. It, it, ironically, I had uh, one webinar on uh, loudspeaker and, and my, my partner was listening in and she went, oh, I didn't realise that so much had changed about going to university. I did have to remind her that she went about 20 years ago. <laughs> things were... Things were obviously going to change during that that time. So I'm going to try and I'll finish off with with a, a, a question I've asked a couple of people. If you were to name two, if you were to give us two tips or name two things, that what are the two most important things that you feel that you've learned during this this quite strange lockdown period? Could be could be anything. Work, work or personal? What, what are two things that you think? Yeah, because obviously there's a lot of people uh, that, that have probably experienced this working from home for the first time in their lives. It, it's all, you know, it can all be a bit strange. So what are your two top tips? Um, oh, well, I think this has been mentioned a lot and I think it's, it's the most important one. And that is when you're working at home is the routine. And it's not just a routine for yourself, uh, it's a routine for the team as well. So, uh, for example, we started immediately having these breakfast meetings. Um, I'll be honest, there were 9.30 in the morning, now they're 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. But the fact that we all come together at the same time every single day and have a quick 15-minute catch-up, uh, just exchanging what we've been up to, what we've learned from the last day, what's happening the next day, 
uh, helps because it sort of helps to start that working day, mm -hmm. but it also um, means that you feel very connected with your team and you're not alone. You're working, you may be separate, but you are working together for something. Um, and then with that routine, as much as possible, try and keep your lunch hour at the same time every single day. Don't, don't yeah. shift three o'clock in the afternoon. Keep it, you know, if it's one till two normally, have it at one till two. And as much as possible, attempt to finish your normal working time. I think that's important for working from home. Uh, the other tip when it comes to uh, working with schools and colleges is find out what the learners uh, are looking for information wise uh, from the schools and colleges you're working with. Uh, it's easy to presume that what they need right now is a student finance workshop or uh, let's go through a personal statement. But um, it, it may be that there's other things that they want to find out about the way universities are working right now that they think your their students uh, will be helpful to their students. So just, just sort of find out from them. And that's going to keep a strong, steady sort of relationship between uh, the schools and colleges liaison at your university and the school and college that you're working with. Well, that's fantastic. I think we've, we've just about hit our, our 20 minutes. So firstly, can I thank you for your time this morning? Uh, I've been fascinating hearing your answers and it sounds as though um, things are, are, are moving positively forward in this sort of div difficult time. Um, you'll need to work out a way of sending each other the patisserie for your 10 o'clock meetings in the morning. <laughs> to decide who's making the tea. But hopefully you'll get that, you'll get that one sorted out. And um, as always, pleasure talking to you, Michael. I'm sure we'll talk again. And, and thank you for participating uh, in the Data Course. Great. Thank you, Sean. Thanks.